Hey, it's a French student here, and today we're going to be starting a new series. This is going to be the Intermediate Java series. So, first of all, here in the first episode, I'll be going through a few subjects you should be at least somewhat familiar with before you actually start this next journey. So, it is Arrays, Inheritance, Abstract Classes, Polymorphism, and Interfaces. And, of course, there's a lot of basic information you need to know previously before knowing any of this. And there will be um, links in the description for videos I've been doing about all of these different subjects. But first of all, an array is just simply a list, kind of like a list of items that have a fixed amount of size. So I'll just call create a, an int array called numbers, which is equal to int of a given size. So I will have three spots. And of course we need to make a new in the array. And with this in the array I would be able to add some numbers. For example I could create a for loop. And based on the length of our array I would just add numbers position i number numbers index i will equal to i. And I'll just print the array by creating another for loop. Let's create it for each loop this time. And going with for each int number in numbers print the number and we now get the numbers on a separate line. So first of all, that's a basic and basic array. Let's create some classes. So based on our structure of a Java program, we in this case just have a source folder and a main folder. And I'll just create a new Java class called animal. And classes in Java have attributes, constructors, and methods. So in this case, I will just have this animal contain the array, I don't know if it makes that much sense, but let's just do it anyway. So we would give it, for example, a string name, an int, an int h, and we're just going to have it contain the int array, which would be numbers. Doesn't make too much sense in this case, but let's just keep going. Create a constructor that contains the name, the h, and the int array, and using this keyword to give it to the numbers previously. We would then create a method. We can create some uh, some getters and some setters. Getters that allow us to get the values. And instead of the numbers just returning the array, we'd also create a get public void get numbers from array that uses the pre like before, where we just use a for each loop, go for each integer number in numbers, and just print the number. So that's a basic class. And we are just going to be using inheritance, where we'll be creating another class, which would be a dog. And this dog is going to implement, not implement, we're not doing interfaces yet, extend animal. And we would get a constructor matching the constructor of the super. And we can use the same methods. So this is basically inheritance. Then we're going to use a bit of polymorphism, where we will be able to create an animal dog which equals to a new dog give it a name let's call him Hans for whatever reason the h3 and we're gonna give it the numbers array where we create a dog of the animal superclass using polymorphism where we would also be able inside our dog to override we will do 
at override. And we then override a method. Let's just get the let's create a method that makes sense to override first. So a public void eat method. Therefore an animal just prints the screen eating. But for our dog, the eat method would be print printing dog eating which allow us to be accessing our dog class and go dog dot eat which would call the dog eating method even though it is created as an animal object first of all but a dog object separately which is basically polymorphism of objects having multiple forms or we could make our animal class an abstract class, which changes that we now can actually create an animal. Animal, animal equals new animal. Call her Anna, or Anna, M3, and just keep the numbers as well. If we don't want any animal to be created, but only walk, want the, the children of the animal class to be created, we can make it abstract, which first of all would make this impossible because we can't make it just animal class, but it also allow us to create abstract methods, which would be methods we need to create in our subclasses, except in a dog, so we could create a public abstract void walking class which now inside our dog given us error because this need to have implement the method and we would just print walking there we go overriding so let's see what we're missing arrays simple arrays inheritance creating classes that inherit from other classes, abstract classes, it, which is kind of like a superclass that can be instantiated. We have polymorphism, creating classes of multiple forms, which allow us to actually have, for example, if we now had another class than dog, a cat class, we could have them both be animals. Yeah, let's skip it for now, but look, check the videos out in the description if you want to know more about any of this stuff. Then the last thing we are missing is the interfaces. So let's create a new class. Hmm, let's see if we can figure out a good one that makes sense. Got an idea, it doesn't make too much sense, but let's create an interface called flying. So what an interface contains is basically just abstract classes. So we just have a public abstract void flying method, which we would implement on some kind of animal. In this case, that would be flying. So let's create another animal. Let's create a bee. And it also extends animal, but it also implements flying. Now we need to implement, first of all, two methods. Two abstract methods from animal, but also from the interface flying. I don't know, I guess you can say a bee can be walking. I think that's okay. And the constructor. So we would just do... B walking and B flying. <laughs> That's kind of funny, but yeah, let's look and have another look at polymorphism then. So what we're now able to do is create another animal, which is now a B, which is a new 
B. B. It's like a proper name. I don't think B's become too old. And we have the numbers, which we still just have because we like arrays. But what we're now able to do is actually just if we, for example, added these to an array, so let's create another array, a uh, animal array, animal array, and we call it animals equals new animal array, and we need two animals. So we would just add it, let's just do animals dot animals add index zero equals our dog and animal add index one equals our b and we can then use a for loop or let's use a, use a for each loop it would probably be faster for each and again say for each animal animal in animals we would like to call the method walking on each animal let's see if we're calling anything else no so now even though they're both animal we get different methods because our dog just have uh, simply walking and a bee is going bee walking. So that was just a simple and pretty fast explanation about arrays, inheritance, abstract classes, polymorphism and interfaces. And if you at least to some degree understood most of it and think you're quite on pace, I would definitely encourage you to keep going and we'll be talking about some new and different um, topics in Java. And if you'd like to hear me hear more about any of these topics, there'll be a link down in the description for all of them. So otherwise, leave a like and subscribe, and I hope you have a wonderful day.